Hi everyone, it's Ellen Dudley from Keller Williams Realty. I'm here again with another business owner. Today I'm talking to Art Stammerist from AWS Business Services. Hi, Ellen. How are you, Art? I'm doing great, thank you. I'm doing great. Good. I love your backdrop. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very nice. Thank you very, very nice. much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, so, Art, tell our viewers a little bit about your business, if you will. Sure, of course. Um, my name is Arthur W. Stammers, and that's where AWS Business Services comes into play. Not Amazon Web Services, just to kind of clarify that, too. Um, the, uh, what our business does, we like to save people money. We like to make savings made easy. Uh, the way I do that largely is through credit card processing. Um, I also help people save money on the utilities, but for today, we'll talk about credit card processing. And um, So tell me about credit card processing. I don't really know a lot about it. Sure, that's fine. Um, people take, credit, businesses take credit cards in a few different ways. Um, they take it on the go, for example, if they want to take it on delivery or uh, take a handheld device to tables or something as in a restaurant. So. Um, a handheld device is uh, what those uh, merchants would like. They can also do it right in store at a register, in which case they can, for example, there's a POS system and they can punch in orders, which talks to the kitchen too. They can also accept it, for example, online. Um, what they can do is they can, on their, com on their computer in front of them in an office setting, is they could take payments that somebody's giving them over the phone, that somebody, uh, email to them securely. They could also have a website where people can do what's called a shopping cart and they can, uh, customers can enter in payments. So the online aspect are people who want recurring payments month after month. They want to be able to use a shopping cart, for example, with a nonprofit, um, church, temple, religious institutions can make payments that way to their nonprofit and that way the nonprofit can know have an accurate picture of what money is coming in consistently. Um, also, on deliveries, for example, deliveries for a restaurant or in a, even a delivery service like a limousine service, uh, when they're out and about and they need to uh, use a credit card machine, when they're out in the field. So those are the three different ways that people, a few different ways that people take credit card payments. So do, are these machines have built-in Wi-Fi systems or how does that work? Yeah. It's whatever, whatever the people have on hand. The ones that are remote that need to go around, they use their own cell service. So they have, similar to your, your phone, uh, they have a SIM card built right into it, so they work off of cell service. That way they can have service anywhere. Um, in store, they can work on either an internet, in, internet cable or Wi-Fi. And when they're online, certainly they're using the internet. So um, I didn't realize that this is really for anybody, anybody who takes a credit card payment, even if you're like a local artist and you sell your wares, like an independent, anyone like on Etsy who, who sells their craft, they can, they can use your services? They certainly can, yes. I offer a service pretty much like those, a very, very versatile service and very, very user-friendly. Um, for those people who are at, uh, for example, farmer's markets, or people who are at a flea market or wherever that just want to accept payment easily, they can do it right from their cell phone. Um, they have the choice to either enter people's information right into the cell phone or on the computer or iPad. They can also use a, a, a mobile swiper, as we call it. It's a device that connects either into it or just next to it by Bluetooth, and that way they can accept secure payments. Okay, so you so you cross all kinds of industries, then I guess. I really do. Um, I have everything from small mom and pop stores uh, to um, I have a in New Hampshire. I have a very large uh, eleven location appliance store. That's my uh, client. Also, I have um, that's Barron's Appliances. I have Lewis Custom Exhaust, which is a multi location uh, car exhaust and car repair place is I have a, a furniture store called Nipposil, and they have several locations in a variety of all different types of industries. Uh, so it's really almost a challenge to say, it, it could be any industry that needs it, and every industry is a little bit unique in the, in the way that they do accept credit cards. 
Um, can I please tell you about the different types of credit card processing available? Sure. Um, there's something called traditional. Traditional is when um, in how the business owner is billed, for example, they get charged a rate and that rate is, is what they end up paying. Um, the rate is usually in the vicinity of about two and a half or three percent. That's what it is. Um, and what I can do is I usually, most everybody I talk to already has credit card processing. So as a service to them and free, no charge at all, is I'll take a look at their statement with their permission. And with it, I can see how much they're paying and also a whole bunch of fees that they may not need to be paying if they're paying it now. It's a bit annoying to me when many processing companies just charge too much in the way of fees. The results go, there are high risk merchants. Um, merchants such as uh, be credit repair, pawn shops, even CBD. Um, these are high risk, they are coverable. I can get uh, credit card processing for them, but they're what's called high risk. Um, there's also something called um, cash discount program, also called the EDGE program, which allows, it uh, lowers the fees dramatically for business owners that want to uh, um, save a lot of money on the processing. And uh, I'm able to cover all of those categories through the different processors I work with. I'm actually a broker of many uh, different processing companies, so that it helps me a lot in um, finding the right fit for the right merchant. So your, low, your slogan is savings with every swipe. Yes. So you just told us how you can look at their statements and save them money. How do you do that? Is it just that big companies that have a lot of accounts have a lot of extra fees associated with them? And because you're a smaller company, you just don't have to charge those fees? Or how, how, how do you save people money? It's a great question. I appreciate you asking me too. I find that there's a lot of different processing companies out there, tons of them, and they're all different. Believe it or not, you wouldn't, they're not all the same, they're different. And a lot of them charge a lot of different fees. Um, many of them, there are government fees and excess fees for PCI, regulation fees. They can, they can even kind of create fees sometimes just to charge more money. So what I do is I take a look at these fees and I see you really don't need to be paying these. They're just trying to make some extra money off you. Also the per swipe and the rate fees. I see how much the other merchants are charging. And uh, because I'm a broker of many companies, uh, my costs are very, very low. So I'm able to give uh, my merchant customers low fees um, because as I establish relations with these companies, um, my, my, my costs are very, very low and I'm able to extend those savings onto the business owner. To see what somebody's paying right now is very helpful to let me know how we can save the money. Yeah, I, I know a lot of small businesses often, especially in times of COVID, have asked if you can pay cash, please do because we have to give up a lot of fees every time you use a credit card. I've heard that from a few different merchants. So, um, so it's good to know that, that there are options out there and they can possibly save. Are, are there ever less than 2% per transaction? Um, usually not, and I'll tell you why. It's because MasterCard, Visa, Discover, and American Express, they have their costs. And believe it or not, probably uh, 96 or 97 percent of the credit card processing bill are the fees straight from MasterCard, Visa, Discover, and American Express. Processing company actually makes, relatively speaking, very little just to deliver. So most all the processing goes straight to the brands. Um, so that, that's a great question also. And um, when a company uses, a lot depends upon the types of cards they're accepting. If, uh, for example, there's a business owner that takes mostly American Express and mostly keys them in on a terminal. When people key them in on a terminal in the, in the mind of a processing company, um, there's a greater chance that it's a fraudulent card and they charge more just due to that extra risk. Um, American Express tends to be a higher brand. So um, in situations where they're keying in a lot of cards onto the credit card terminal and there are cards that people come in that give their benefits, that give um, cash back or travel rewards to the card holders. Believe not, the merchant is paying for that. So if there was, if the um, business owner has clients that mostly come in with debit cards, 
debit cards are cheap because they don't offer benefits. They just come straight out of the checking account. So if 90% of all the customers that come out of the restaurant use a debit card, it would be less expensive for the merchant to run. Um, whereas if the merchant, as I was saying, if they're higher risk cards, then it would just cost more. So a lot depends upon the type of card that the customers are walking in with. Wow, interesting. I did not know that. I mm. never realized that they were paying the, for my miles. Yes, and, and that's one of the reasons why seeing somebody's statement is so important. I can see the types of cards they're accepting. Their, their clientele, what types of cards they get, they're giving. And that's why it can vary so much. That's why we'll look at somebody's statement. So how long have you been in business? I've been doing this for about five years. Yeah. Um, started off uh, back, in fact, my, my debut to the business was um, when the, uh, the chip first came out. I remember pretty clearly. It was kind of a, uh, it was a very, very confusing time for everybody because people had, to, um, it was just very, very new. So it was a very confusing time, but certainly the chip's been around for quite a while now. There are some, still some people not using the chip and they really should. Uh, in fact, what the chip does for people, for the merchant, is that if, for example, they take the credit card payment and the card is fraudulent, as long as they use the, can I get in the, the dip to dip the card in as opposed to swiping it? By dipping, it means that MasterCard and Visa are actually taking on the liability of being a stolen card. So that's why having a chip card is the best way for the merchant not to lose out. It's just much more secure. Oh, okay, good to know. All right, that's all I have time for today, Art, but I appreciate you being here with me and I thank you very much for educating us about credit card services. And I will be sure to post your contact information at the end of this video for anyone who would like to contact you. Thank you very much. Can I just add one more thing, please? Sure. Um, as my, as my uh, con contribution to anybody who's wanting to start during the COVID time now, um, I'm willing to waive uh, all monthly fees um, and have no initial contact fee either. So no fees at all to apply during this COVID time just to be able to save money to business owners in an extra way. That's very generous. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and opportunity, Ellen. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Art. So see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.